All right, real talk. I've been editing in DaVinci Resolve for probably the last like four years. And so I just want to break down some of the things that I've learned, five of them to be specific, that have saved me over the past four years, I would say easily 100 hours. So let me walk you through the steps of probably one of the most time-saving tools you're gonna use in DaVinci Resolve. So you're gonna come up here, we're in our DaVinci project, come up here, hit this little timeline view options with the little tab on it. This will allow you to open other tabs of other timelines, but that's not really the feature that I wanna to talk to you about. The feature is over here by the mixer, hit that little plus, boom, double timeline. Now, it's pretty easy. You can just open up a new timeline here, and let's say you want to bring your selects into one timeline, and then you actually wanna build your project in another timeline, and you can very easily just grab them, move them over, and boom, you've got that. It's like copying between timelines without having to copy, paste, and do all the things. Next feature. Now, you've probably seen the Adobe Podcast AI tool that basically makes your any audio sound like a podcast, but what they don't tell you is that that's actually built in to DaVinci Resolve and it's called voice isolation. So right in here, I've got this long video of me just rambling about stuff. And if I select my track and I come up to the audio section, I can see an option here called voice isolation. Essentially, it does exactly what it says it does. It isolates your voice. And you can you know, change the intensity of said voice isolation to whatever you want it to be. An important note though, the Adobe podcast thing will actually EQ your uh, audio to sound like a podcast, whereas this just simply isolates the voice. So you, it's something you wanna think about as you're using this tool, but it definitely saves you time because now you don't have to export the audio from your project, upload it to Adobe AI, then download the audio from your project, and then import it back into your project, line it up with the original, and then export your actual video. Instead, you just uh, click the button and you're good, you're good to go. Whoa, that was crazy. Next tool. Now, if you find yourself recording interviews or anything that honestly has a person talking on screen, then this feature is gonna be killer for you. So right here, I have a long clip of me talking on screen. I talked for easily 24 minutes. I'm ashamed. But if I right click this file here, I can come down to audio transcription. I can hit transcribe. So now DaVinci Resolve is going to transcribe my video. And once it's done transcribing, I'm actually gonna be able to edit the video through text. Unfortunately, I chose the longest clip that I have available to transcribe, so it's gonna be quite the ordeal, but what are you gonna do? So I'm on some Food Network stuff. Now that I've taken my project out of the oven, it is transcribed, I can see it right here. So I can come up to these three little dots, I can hit remove silent portions, boom. Now, you gotta be careful with this, it's not 100% accurate. It may be getting better sometimes if you like mumble it'll interpret that as a silent portion. So just be careful. But then let's say in this video, I'm gonna talk through 10 things that honestly, I wish I'd known sooner, okay? That is my intro. But hopefully by watching this video, my goal is that you won't have to go through some of the same things I did or listen to all the interviews I did over the last seven years. Seems like a pretty cool video you should possibly watch. So I just highlight it and then I can literally go insert, boom. Look at this. It's in my freaking timeline now. Are you kidding? That's crazy. And then if I, let's say I, instead of inserting it, I don't want it to be in the video at all, hit delete and boom, it's not in the video anymore. See, it's all crossed out, crazy tool. This will save you so much time editing like this. It's honestly my new favorite thing to do. So this this one feature has the potential to save you far more than 100, 100 plus hours. Okay, on to the next one. When it comes to color grading, I think the hardest part is actually coming up with a look and you know, finding that look for yourself. But once you do find that look, obviously you want it to transfer between projects. So let me show you something I like to do to remedy this problem. First of all, we have our look right here. This is kind of the vibe. I'm actually probably gonna use this one, but you get the idea. And what we can do here is we're in our gallery, we're in our stills tab, we can go to the power grade tab, and here we'll see Film Vision 2 by Sir. Um, and so what we can do is we can actually drag this still into the power grade tab. Now power grades will transfer between projects. So if a still is in the power grade tab, then you can easily apply it to any other frame from any other project that you may find. Whereas stills are project specific. So once you find that look that you really love and you wanna just put it on everything, throw it in the power grades tab and it's gonna save you a ton of time. That way you don't have to, you know, recreate every single look that you, you know, created in the first place. That's all we're trying to do here, save time. Okay. 
Next tool. Next tool. Next tool. Now, this isn't exactly a tool, but this dude, Mr. Alex Tech, is probably the most helpful DaVinci Resolve creator that I've found. He is always creating different keyframe hacks and time-saving tips, kind of like this video here. And on top of all of that, in some of his videos, he has DaVinci Resolve templates they're like effects templates, kind of like what you would find in Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro. And it allows you to create just different effects, repeatable effects in DaVinci Resolve. They're, they're brilliant, definitely worth checking them out. Now, if you've been counting, that means we are at five tips, but I got a bonus tip for you. I'm gonna call this the hotkey speed round. I'm gonna run you through some of my favorite keyboard shortcuts in DaVinci Resolve that save me tons and tons and tons of time. They do, they really do. I don't know why that sounded sarcastic. It just, it's the mood I'm in right now, I guess. Okay, here we go, let's get it. We're gonna Command B, that's awesome. Then we come up here and let's say we Command B again. Well, then we want to automatically delete the space in between so we can shift or uh, command click with the arrows to select different clips and then we can shift delete and it will ripple delete. You probably knew that one, but I just, you gotta know it, all right? Next, an incredible tool is hitting T and that's gonna allow you to actually select the section of the video that you want. So if, you know, we got a really small video here and let's say I want a different section of it, then I can just move it around all the way, and you can see the outline of the source material there, and I can just decide what part of the main clip is actually gonna be in my edited clip. This is, this is a game changer. That one's stupid helpful. Next, a lot of times if I'm cutting through something, I like to navigate around the timeline without having to touch the mouse. Never have to take my hands off the keyboard, so I can go up and down to go to different cut points. I can go right and left to go one frame at a time, and I can go shift to go a second at a time. So I can navigate a second at a time, shift right or left uh, to navigate to that, or V to go to the closest cut point. And obviously selector is A, blade is B. I don't know what this thing does, but it's probably worth checking out. Lastly, in will toggle your magnet effect, which will snap things into place. And shift command L will toggle the link effect if you have audio and video and you wanna move them independently. That is it, I hope that this has saved you a ton of time. Oh, and if you wanna see my color grading kind of workflow, then you should actually check out this video here on screen where I break down my entire color grading process. Okay, until next time, let's get out there and make better films.